Hey everybody, Vaughn here with the Vonster Vlog and welcome to another week on the homestead. Let's get this camera turned around. You can see the red bud is starting to pink out a little bit. Just look at that sky, you guys. Holy smokes. That's the neighbor's evergreen tree that I just love. Then it must have rained a little last night. <sighs> yeah, I love the fresh, clean snow of just rained on springtime. We got my little gnome here. The neighbor's tree is really pinking up over yonder. We've got some daffodils growing along the fence. Those Egyptian bunching onions are doing really well. This is going to be the first bed that gets planted this year. Um, it's got these bee balm, not bee balm, uh, lemon balm over here in the corner that I would like to dig up and divide into possibly two or three or five. I don't know. I will have to see how the root ball looks, but it, divide it into a couple of plants to uh, let it multiply. And then over there, there's our Egyptian onions. Uh, they'll get little bulbs at the tips of the greens and then fall over and start growing again. They have been very prolific. I have not uh, had to intentionally plant them in ages. <laughs> so they're a little bit of a pest, but uh, hey, onions. And these would be something that I would totally... Um, if I had a freeze dryer, I would totally be cutting and freeze drying the greens because they don't really hold up being, um, what you call it, dehydrated. That didn't really hold up real well. But we're going to plant this bed with cabbages down the middle. Just four cabbages. I learned my lesson last year to not over group them, to crowd them. And I may be planting this bed down the center with cabbages as well or that one right there. Don't know yet. Just because these beds haven't had cabbage, I grew peppers here last year, and in that bed I grew just flowers, uh, well, and cucumbers, I think. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to be overcrowding the cabbages again, and then I'll be planting probably radishes and who knows what else. We'll see. I'll keep you guys posted, though, but I'm excited to finally start planting Ooh, this week. So an update on the toads in our pond, let's see, I was hearing them just a second ago, but the water is flowing just a little bit. I love the reflection there on the water. The lily pads are starting to come up, it makes me very happy. Let's see, I'm not entirely certain where said toad is. I'm going to leave him in peace. He might be he's probably underneath this rock right here. But, leave him in peace and good luck to him and his endeavors. But, I'm excited to get to see some tadpoles in here. Alrighty guys, so this is, if you have watched Last week's Vonster Vlog Homestead Update, um, we are literally picking up the morning directly after. I'm taking the rings off and I'm just moving the uh, stock that we had canned, which is looking so good. I think all of everybody sealed really nice, very good. <laughs> but I'm going to be washing the jars just because I always wash my jars before putting them in the storage. Um, I'm going to be reheating up all of these uh, empty uh, jars for the chicken that we're going to be canning today. That's our big project is to get the rest of that chicken canned up out of the fridge, clear out that fridge space. Um, and I'm hoping we can get it done in a single batch because in my pressure canner I can, can, uh, I can fit 14 jars. Um, so... Fingers crossed that we'll be able to get that to fit. I do actually have the jars for it, so 
it's more about just trying to, but it's not going to. We're gonna have to do two batches now that I'm thinking about it because I can fit about a pound of chicken into a pint jar, which is perfect for Randy and I, uh, but I think he processed 25 pounds. We maybe lost one pound to trimmings and like moisture loss from defrosting them. So it's, it's gonna take two batches, definitely. But she's all right. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything else that I can <laughs> that I can can up uh, to use any excess space in the uh, second batch, but we'll burn that bridge when we get there. So I'm gonna get these jars washed, heat it up, and meet you guys in the next step. Alrighty, guys, I've got my jars ready. I'm wearing gloves today. Normally, I don't care much about like I just wash my hands first and then wash them again after. But I really didn't feel like getting goo <laughs> chicken goo. Normally I don't care too much about, you know, I'll just wash my hands first and then wash them after, but I didn't want to get gooey chicken goo. Just, I didn't feel like it today, so I've got my gloves on, especially after the cut up chicken's just been sitting in the fridge and it gets all that, that, I feel like they pump them full of water before freezing them, like, I don't know, because it's, when I've harvested my own chicken, one of our pullets turned out to be, uh, when Henrietta was a Henry, uh, when our pullets turned out to be young roosters, um, you know, it's technically illegal to keep roosters here in town. So even though I think every single one of my neighbors have them, but I've never, like, there's so much runoff water uh, from the, from the chicken. Looks like the pink slime from Ghostbusters when it filled up the bathtub and tried to take the baby. Y'all remember that? <laughs> like in that movie? Anyways, um, so I am just stuffing. It's a lot easier to stuff the jars. It's a lot easier to cut the chicken when the chicken's frozen, but it's a lot easier to stuff the jars when it's defrosted. So, just picking them up, guapping them in. Now, I am going to be putting a half teaspoon of salt on the tops of all these jars before I pour in a little bit. Actually, I don't even know if I'm gonna need any water, y'all. I think I'm just gonna put the salt in and let it do its thing. See how it goes this time around. I've done the past couple by adding water or adding broth. And uh, I always say variety keeps life spicy, so let's spice it up a bit. Because their own juices are just filling up the jars anyhow. Just packing in, making sure, and I am gonna go through with like a butter knife and go down the edge of all the jars and try to let all the bubbles out. But I'm gonna pop this into some time lapse and get me, well, I guess actually I'll just meet you guys here for the next step. Okay, so I have all of the jars packed. This is how much chicken we still have left over. Um, quite frankly, if we have, and I'm, I'm putting the half teaspoon of salt into each of these. It just makes the flavor so much better for sometimes we'll crack a jar open uh, and just use it for like a chicken salad sandwich more or less or chicken quesadillas and just having it seasoned with salt right from the beginning makes it good eating straight out of the jar like where it's flavorful and not just plain boiled chicken um ooh, i hope i have enough salt well that one i'm gonna have to refill that so i'll just use my cooking shaker There we are. And now I'm gonna be putting all the lids on. Well, I'm definitely wiping the brims first because I was messy <laughs> with cramming these full of chicken. I'm excited to try this in their end juices though. Like, and then to actually be able to compare um, to the chicken that we did last night that was canned in 
chicken stock like that we had made. Um, now I stack my lids. I try to kind of just opposite of each other because it makes them so much easier to pull apart when they're wet. There we are. If you hear a little roaring in the background, we do have a fan going in here because it's this kitchen heats up quick, which is nice in the winter, but it's a beautiful spring day today, y'all. Like, I hope wherever you are, it's a beautiful day, too. Now, we want to put these rings on just finger tight which to me what I take that as meaning is as tight as you can get it without getting your wrist involved because you want there to be enough pressure that or loose enough I guess that it, it can push air out of the jar as far as I understand it I don't know, so much of the time in the books and everything, they tell you, do this thing, do that thing. But they don't explain exactly why. And it helps me personally so much to, to better understand if they say, well, why do you only do it finger tight? You know, is there risk of the glass expanding or something? Is it heat? Like, is that a thing that happens in the, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> so... I don't know if any of y'all know or have some theories let me know down in the comments but I think my my suspicion is that it is to you want it tight enough that it holds the lid on so as it cools it'll be in the correct position so that whenever you know the temperature chain happens and makes that vacuum seal the lid will be correctly positioned I also think it holds the lid on so that as the contents start to boil and it pushes, you know, uh, all of the air and possibly some of the liquid out as well, um, it just gives it room to expel that. Yep. Oh, got one more. Um, so yeah, I think that's what's going on, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm just canning chicken. So now the water here is heating up. And you don't want it to be too hot because you don't want to be shocking your jars in. Normally, I'd fill this with hot contents, but the whole idea was to raw pack. And I'm not about to let some chicken get up to room temperature. Um, <laughs> just sitting out. So, uh, we'll see how this goes. And the jars had been, you know, cleaned and washed with soap and water. I read recently that it's no longer required when pressure canning to sterilize everything first, but I still think it's a good idea to clean it up. Now, this was a luxury for me, but I got this second rack for just setting inside, and it's wonderful for if you're stacking, like if, if I were stacking different sized jars, I don't know what that noise was. I think it was just the, the rack settling but I get a whole lot less jostling around this way. And not to jinx it, but the past couple of batches of canning that I've done, I haven't gotten any broken jars, which I'm very pleased about because I usually always get at least one back whenever I wasn't using a second rack. Okay, so there's that. We are going to put, check the seal, make sure it's positioned. There we are gonna line this up there we go and we'll bring it on and then we're gonna bring this up to a boil I'm gonna pop the rest of that chicken back into the fridge and do some other stuff I'll meet you guys back here okay guys so this is the noise that I'm looking for I can hear it rattling it's been coming up to temp and any second now that's going to pop up and then we start the 10 minute timer. Any second now. <laughs> Ooh, you can do it. Let's zoom in on it, see if that helps. Ooh. Oh, it's trying. Ooh. 
It's trying. You can do it. You can get up to bright. I mean, me cheering on the sidelines. There's literally nothing. It's physics, but. <laughs> Wait a second. I'll probably edit this out, but I just want to catch it. The drama, the anticipation. Oh my god. Wait, can I make it be hotter? There we go. Any second now. You can see it's trying so hard. Because that happens, that's venting. All that steam you can see. Oh, and there it is. We start the timer. So while pressure canning, I am using the rest of the stock that was left over um, from canning up the stock yesterday um, with two cups of rice. And I know that the pressure canner recipe says just one cup of rice to one cup of water, but I have not had good results with that. And I don't mind if the rice comes out super mushy because it's for a casserole anyways. So um, we did four, the broth capped off with water to bring it up to four cups of liquid for two cups of rice. And I'm just gonna pressure cook this. Okay, so let's check on our rice. I hope it's not horrible. Woo, all that steam. Ooh, that's looking good. Yeah, it's, I don't think it hurt it at all to put in some of that extra to double the liquid. That went by really nice. How do y'all do your rice in an Instapot or Ninja Foodie? Or let me know down in the comments or in the premiere chat. Hey, everybody in the premiere. <laughs> Alrighty, so the rice is done and the chicken in the pressure canner is coming back down. Like I've turned the heat off, it's hit its timer mark. We are. Now, I'm real lazy. I know that I could make my own cream of chicken, um, but it is so affordable, or so convenient, rather. I'd rather pay the convenience of getting that on out of the... Sometimes I can get the seal to break. Not today, though. So we're just going to glob this on out of here. Maybe one day I'll make my own, like, start making my, my own cream of soups. But for now, this stuff is, especially when we're sick, we'll just open, crack open a can. Like, some folks like to make convenience out like it's the root of all evil. But y'all, it's pretty freaking nice. Um, <laughs> so there's that. I'm doing just a half a jar or half a can of water to thin that out a little bit. I've never actually measured before for this recipe. Now we are using an entire 12 ounce bag of frozen mixed vegetables. And y'all, I am so hungry and ready for lunch. This is going to make enough that I'm going to freeze half of it, like how we did the tuna noodle do uh, a few weeks ago, but we're going to freeze half of this and put the other half in a nine inch square pan today. That way, that'll feed us for two big meals and then we'll have two or three big meals actually, because I may make a little bit of a pot pie out of this. I'm just making a mess everywhere. But here I have chicken from in the fridge that we had um, last week when we made the chicken stock, which I say last week, but it was last week's video. It was actually like day before yesterday <laughs> at the time of recording. So it's just chicken that we had cooked in the Ninja Foodie, uh, stripped off the bone. It, we, like we cooked it from frozen, defrosted it just a bit. Um, and I am shredding, I'm gonna do the two breasts and the two tenderloins. Um, and I'm just shredding it up. We could chop it up real fine or something. Let's just skin. 
I don't mind skin. I enjoy it. Uh, Randy didn't much care for it, so I don't put it in. But yeah, we could dice it up real small. I personally like the meatier texture of just shredded. And I don't feel like getting a fork dirty, which is why I'm just shredding it by hand. But yeah, once we get the two chicken breasts worth of chicken shredded up and tossed into the bowl, then we will be mix it up and oh, we gotta put the rice in too. <laughs> now that gives us options. We could freeze it as is, as just a chicken pot pie filling. Um, or we could mix the rice in to make it a cheesy chicken and rice casserole. Um, and if we're in the mood for just like some mega carbs, we could still put biscuits on top and make like cheesy chicken and rice casserole with biscuits on top. Which is very yummy because then it makes it like a cheesy chicken and rice and dumplings. But that's like double carbs, which honestly just sounds amazing. <laughs> so we're just tearing up the pieces, sharing some kitchen noises with y'all. I kind of don't mind the hiss and wiggle of the pressure canner. I love that I was able to open up the window. Like I love having a, a window that opens in the kitchen. Um, for years in our apartments and even the house we lived in when we lived in Tennessee, um, there was a window over the kitchen sink, but it just looked out into a sunroom. So it was difficult to get that direct to the outside connection of the bird noises and the wind chime and just that breeze cutting through. It's so nice. It's one of the perks of living in a house um, that was built in like 1907, I think. Uh, so definitely an old house, but they, they have so many windows and we can open three windows and it feels like we have a fan going in almost every room. So it's really nice on days like this where it's, you know, 70 degrees to just get some airflow through the house some fresh air through. I mean, I say that, but the house is so drafty anyhow because <laughs> there's no insulation in the walls and all the windows are the original windows. <laughs> so they are like... I. I Next time a window breaks or something, and it, or we have some reason to be measuring the glass, I'd love to measure and see if there's any sort of thickness difference between the top of the pane and the bottom of the pane, because that would be interesting. Okay, so I'm going to give this a stir in now, just to see. Like, that was two whole chicken breasts and the two tenderloins. And honestly, that looks pretty nice and chickeny, but we like to do really high protein. So I am gonna put in just a little bit of this chicken thigh. Just shredding it up. All right, I'm gonna get my hands washed. Oops. So now I'm coming in and I'm just going to scooch, I'm going to take about half this rice because we can save the other half for stir fry. So I guess for this recipe that would make it to where um, just one cup of uncooked rice. And if you're trying to stretch things a little further, you could definitely add more rice to this, bulk it up a little bit, but I feel like this is a really good proportion uh, for, for what we're going for. I like that combo. It's not, it could use more vegetables probably, but we usually have it with a bit of salad on the side or like some broccoli. Um, but yeah, definitely a nice, easily customizable custom mamai. You can change it however you want. <laughs> Alright, let me find my 9x9 nine nine pan. So I'm just going to glob about half of this into the pan. Whoopsie. And I haven't sprayed it or anything. You could, but meh, I don't care. 
<laughs> like, yeah, that's perfect. And this is enough that this will do, yeah, I think maybe one half always ends up a little bigger than the other half, but, but yeah, so we'll pop this. We could put some cheese on top of it and pop it straight into the oven. But I think I might mix up some biscuits for on top. I don't know. We'll see. No, I'm pretty hungry now. We'll do biscuits on the other one. So I've put the rest of the cheesy chicken and rice casserole kind of filling section into the fridge to cool down the rest of the way uh, after putting that hot rice in there. That's our oven's maintaining temperature. Um, since everything in it is already cooked and it's not frozen, I don't have to like wait around. I can just put the cheese on top and then 10-15 minutes, just however long it takes till it's hot and bubbly, uh, and then it's ready to eat. We like it with some Ritz crackers or French fried onions mixed in just for a little bit of texture mix up. Or like I had said, if salads are in season right now, uh, we'd be having some salad with it. And I'm just grind or shredding an entire pound. Um, you know, I'm going to shred it till I have what I can, my hand can hold on to. And then I cut the rest of that up for just snacking cheese. But I really prefer to store uh, cheese in the freezer. Just one pound blocks or half pound blocks depending on... We go through about a pound block of cheddar a week between the two of us. We live for dairy products, y'all. Like, if we ever become lactose intolerant, it's just going to be a bump in the road because we're unstoppable. <laughs> like, we are not going to stop eating cheese. Um, but we only go through about a half pound of mozzarella between the two of us. And that fulfills all of our cheese needs. With a little for eating, just for fun. We are fans of sharp cheddar. But yeah, it's when it gets to about right here. I'll just cut the rest of that up into probably four cheese sticks. And with the rest of this, ooh, look at that shredded cheddy. Shreddy cheddy. It's great for making your own cheddar bay biscuits at home because it's much moister, much more moist than um, whenever you get the shredded stuff and it's coated in that powder to keep it from sticking. So it sticks together like cray cray, but that's fine. Uh oh, I dropped some cheese. So now I'm just going to take a handful. I think that looks pretty good. Let's pop this into the oven. So now we're going to end up putting all that back into the bag that we had it in. I'd love to get, there are some class like food storage meal prep Tupperwares that I've got my eye on on Amazon, but it's not quite in our budget yet. So I'm just going to pop these over into one side. Then I love these little foldable, flexible cutting boards. Normally I'd stick it in a bowl to hold it upright, but here we are. Let's see if we can do this two-handed. I don't think so. There we go. Nope, <laughs> that's not going to work. Ah. Yeah, I'm starting to see the appeal of those bag holder openers. <clears throat> I'll stick it in my hand. <laughs> At least for the bulk of it. We'll tilt it for the crumbs. There we go. But yeah, so we'll just pick our cheese sticks out of the shredded cheese. There we go. Oh, that's so much better. There we go. Time to do some dishes while food cooks. 
Okay, so this is the serving after it's been uh, cooked up to bubbling in the oven. And then we just use one of these stacks of crackers. Smushed. And that's a pretty generous portion of crackers for the each of us. So we just take that and you can sprinkle it on and then bake, but I like to do it by serving. Yeah, that's a lot of crackers, but it's super, super comfort food. And there's after one on the ground. There's the fork, so it's ready to eat. Hey y'all, well it took all day, but I've just finished the second batch of chicken getting canned. So it's been sitting here cooling for a minute. I've had a couple of other projects going. But we are just going to take that off. Open this up. Let's get that lid out of the way. Ooh, hot water. There we go. Yeah, so they always say, oh, open it, you know, away from you. But if I do this, the con condensed water uh, on the top just comes out and gets all over my feet. So I just, <laughs> it's, it is what it is. So top shelf's looking pretty good. So far, all of our other chicken and stock, like everything's sealed up really well. We haven't had any of the problems uh, that I was bracing myself for. It's still going to be really hot to pick this up with my hand, but I'm going to try to use my glove. There we go. But it feels real good getting something done. Getting chicken put away or getting food made and into the freezer. I can never remember which is which, but the ant and the grasshopper. I think it's the grasshopper that Lolly gagged all summer. And it was the ant that was putting things away. But I feel like I've been the ant, Randy and I both, for decade, a decade. And so I'm looking forward to uh, getting to sit down and enjoy the fruits of our labor for a little bit. So the rest of that chicken only made those nine cans, but I think that's just fine. So I'm going to get this all cleaned up and I think that's it for today y'all I'm just gonna I'm gonna make a, like throw together a stir fry with that leftover rice from earlier for dinner and then just keep working for the rest of the night so it'll be just a blink of an eye for y'all but it'll be been done the night for me so see y'all in just a sec Hey guys, so I am pulling. <laughs> I should focus on one thing at a time, shouldn't I? I'm not going to, but I should. It's a beautiful day out in the garden. I got a Sam dog <laughs> helping me through, and I am just doing all sorts of stuff. Um, we're, we're planting some stuff in the garden today, you guys. We're planting. Let's get this turned. We're planting, I got some violas, and I'm gonna plant my cabbages, and I'm gonna plant, uh-oh. We had some fellas tip over. Now I'm gonna plant this spinach, even though it's going to seed, I'm gonna try to trim it back and see if I can't do something with it. Uh, but that will at least clear out this tote for me to put other plants in, and it's getting all nice and pink. We have a big old delivery of dirt. Our Sam dogs being a Sam dog, our Z dogs being a Z, and it's so windy today, you guys. Um, I got planted, there's all the chicken butts, over in Callie's garden. 
we got her planted with some purple hyacinths. And I'm hoping that uh, as more hyacinths become available, or maybe I can get some more bulbs. Z, don't you pee on Callie. I'm on to you, buddy. <laughs> but as we get more hyacinths, I'd like to do a whole circle of hyacinths around her. But I've got a bunch of yard work to do and very little light to do it by because the sun is because the sun is setting and directly in my face. So let's get to work, y'all. As I dig up this big, beautiful, Melissa Aficionalis, which I'm sorry. We will deal with that on the morrow because today we're getting this bed planted. Come hell or high water. Oh, the soil's looking good. Now I know there's a lot of folks who go by the no dig, but I do this, I turn it up so that way I can get any crabgrass roots out up out of it. So, the best gardening system is the one that you actually do. So something may be perfect on paper, but just get it done. Alrighty guys, so what I'm doing here is I've got my own spinach seedlings that I've grown from seed myself uh, and some viola. Uh-oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, and I like to place my transplants first. That way I can then come through and just get them down into the ground. I'm, my spinach became a little leggy, so I'm going to try planting it deep the way you do tomatoes and just see what happens. Because at this point, they're shooting off to seed anyhow, so it's not going to be the end of the world if they don't make it. So I'm just, instead of feeding them to the chickens or the rabbits, I'm going to experiment with them and see what's up. And I may actually just save the seed from them because I know that they won't have cross-pollinated with anything else uh, in my garden. So, ooh, got a grub for the chickies. Let's go give a grub to the chickies. They're still out and about. Ooh. Hey, Sam Dog, we're gonna give a grub to the chickies. Hey, chickies.
Good job, Chia. You got it, girl. <laughs> this garden is hard work, though. I tell y'all what, but it's good. It's good for the body, good for the mind, good for everything in between. So I'm going to keep getting this planted, and then I'll show you what we're up to once, uh, once I get done. And it may be too dark, so I may check in with y'all in the morning. So... Okay guys, so it's pretty dark right now, but you can see here we have spinach with pansies and our red cabbages down the center. I learned my lesson last year. I should have listened to our friend Jim who was like, you need to give those cabbages space. And I was like, no, nah, it's fine. I should have listened to you, Jim. They're and pansies. <laughs> actually, they're violas or violas or something. But I, I see what you did there. Sorry, Z. I tried to get you a flower. <laughs> and over here, we've got our green cabbages and the rest of the violas or pansies or whatever um, intermixed with some parsley. So we're going to get the metal hoops put back into the beds and get the um, the bug net put over it. Wow. But I know, That's right? Like... It's significantly darker in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Huh. Good job, night mode. Good morning, you guys. It is a beautiful day. I just wanted to share this amazing sky and the colors. It's it's not all green yet, but it's getting vibrant, and I love it. I love it a bunch. Let's go let those chickens out. So it is echo windy today, um, but you can see the bricks and the wires are holding up um, the bug netting that hopefully will keep our cabbages safe. Um, and so I'm trying something different this year with the arches going along the sides as well instead of just hooping over. So we'll see how it goes. I, I don't know if it's actually going to lift it off the sides at all, but I mean, it seems to, especially on that far one. I don't know, we'll see. More data is required. Hey guys, so it's that time of week again where we're doing the premiere and it's premiereception again. I wonder how far we can keep this going. So <laughs> I'm going to try to get the premiere footage of like this for every single time and I'm having a cup of tea and I just want to thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with me. And I'm going to get back to hanging out with you guys, but this makes me so happy. There's Ember Kitty, same spot as last week. And Sam and Z-Dog. Did my Randy. Sorry. <laughs> He's like, don't get me on camera. Hey guys. So, um, I wanted to thank everybody who's been so supportive of the channel with viewing and liking and subscribing. And we even have, um, memberships open now. But, uh, we don't actually at the time of recording have any members yet. But I wanted to thank anybody preemptively because y'all's support means that we can expand uh, our homestead even if it's just in very small ways um, and one of the ways is I was able to get some stuff on Amazon uh, <laughs> just from the um, y'all viewing our stuff and I wanted to show I gotta get more lightning here so one of the things we were able to get is this handle and lid that uh, Randy likes sodas and I can't blame them they're pretty tasty but we're trying to cut back on and he's on board with this too so it's not just me Vaughn Von telling him instead of volunteering <laughs> um, but we're gonna make our own sweet tea because even really sweet sweet tea has significantly less sugar than um, sodas and he's not really into artificial sweeteners and I don't want to make him miserable so <laughs> We were going to try this route, but I really wanted something that I could hold uh, and pour because, well, both of us could hold and pour because if we do that, we're much more likely to actually use it. And it fits wide mouth jars. It was pretty affordable. I'll have it linked down in the video description in case um, you think you might like one. And it also seems like it might be really great just for uh, maybe even homemade ranch or something. Uh, I don't know, that's kind of a lot of wrench, but I'm not judging. <laughs> and I'm going to be making some sweet tea today. Uh, 
I was going to do sun tea because that's my favorite, not having to boil water. Um, but it's cloudy and cold and windy outside. So I'm, I'm really, really excited about this. Very, very sturdy, really stout plastic as well. Seems like it has a really good seal. I will keep you guys posted. I'm actually going to test it really quick. Let me get some water in here. So I wanted to see how this fits, like, and how it feels with a full half gallon. Yeah, no leaking. No leaking. That is awesome. Heck yeah. And there's no, like, rubber gasket or anything to get, like, gross. It's just a pressure seal. And nothing seems to be leaking from the hinge. That's really good. Because it's things that I've used in the past, like different... Oh, I put it on there quite tight. Maybe it doesn't need to be on that tight. But how the inside mechanism is actually fully enclosed. There's no, like... There's no open bolts or anything like that to have to worry about. Now there is a gasket, a little, yeah, rubber gasket like there to help seal. I'm, I'm pleased, you guys. Really excited. Let's see. Superior quality. Our lids easily pop open and stay open. They only flip back down when applied to force, which allows for easy brewing, storing, pouring. No leaks. Cool. Right on. We'll see how it goes. But, uh, <laughs> so there's that one that we were able to get that I'm making some sweet tea in later. And then, how do y'all do your sweet tea? Like, because normally the way that I've done it in the past is I'll, like, boil about, oh, I'm still super zoomed in. I'll boil about a half or a quarter gallon, so a quart, I guess. Um, is that why a quart's called a quart? Because it's a quarter of a gallon? Y'all. Huh. Well, I'll be darned. Um, so a quart, I'll boil a quart of water and to brew it like with double amount of tea bags. Um, and then I'll fill it up the rest of the way with ice to let it dilute the tea, but also get it back down to like cold. And then um, I have no idea how much sugar I'll put into a half gallon. I used to make it in a plastic pitcher that we had before the pitcher got all like gross. Um, because it had these like seams down at the bottom that just had, looked like it had like mold or something in it and I couldn't get it clean. So uh, I'm excited to use the glass jars. Now these bad boys I am very excited about. The sprouting seeds haven't arrived yet, um, but I'm really interested in seeing the quality. Excellent. I was very afraid of them having just a loose metal edge on this strainer end. But again, I got it for fit and wide mouth jars because that's just about all I use. But fits on just fine. I'll probably be, I don't know if I'll use a quart or I'll probably just use a pint jar and it's a pack of four. And then it has these, lots of packaging. It has these little stands. How does this work? There are no instructions. So I guess how to maybe okay i think that's how we do it this is how we do it because it's supposed to be oh you know we might do quart i don't know it depends entirely on how much um sprouts we eat currently our current rate of sprout consumption is zero but we're hoping to fix that because like we eat a lot of our canned tuna and canned chicken we have as like tuna salad or chicken salad wraps and some sprouts in that would be delightful um so i don't know if we'll be using pint jars or quart jars but a quart jar fits okay let's see if maybe who eats a gallon worth of sprouts in a day it could hold up a gallon Ooh, maybe not that was a little heavy for it um or a half gallon rather and i guess i could always tighten the bolts on the side is that how this works yes oh my gosh okay so it didn't come with instructions but i still figured it out and it says we're supposed to do this in like uh the dark that way the sprouts go real real long out of the seeds before putting on leaves which makes it a bit more uh fibrous so very excited you guys and it comes with four which I'm hoping will give us a four day rotation of like if we had the seeds like the sprouting seeds here I'd put them in I think you soak them 
I'm gonna have to Google it. Um, but I think you soak them. If y'all do sprouts, please let, let me know what you do because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, soak them and then overnight and then rinse them. So we'll have one that's on the soak. We'll have one that's on day one of being rinsed. Like we'll rinse it morning and night while growing. And then we'll have another one that's on day two, morning and night rinse and growing. And then we'll have the one that is on day three, we'll harvest. So yeah, harvest and then kind of shift it back around. So as we get this figured out, I don't know where I'm going to grow these. We'll have to figure it out, you guys. <laughs> But I am very, very excited, so <sighs> very good. Hey guys, okay, so after today's premiere, it became very clear to me that I need a little bit more structure to these weekly vlogs instead of just being like, oh, this thing and then this thing and then this thing. So this is the same day as the premiere. Y'all can be judgy on my hat all you want. It's cold out here because <laughs> this wind is biting. Um, but we have our friends, that's my barking dogs. Uh, we have peat hummus and cow manure compost here in the trailer. This whole trailer was like 80 bucks. Uh, not the trailer, but like all the dirt in it. And then I'm going to be, we've got behind this cart, we have, actually, I can go point at it with my, and you can be the camera dude, maybe? Where the it, poop at? You look very nice. This is all the poop. I have a microphone on right here. You turn it like this. Yeah, no, I don't. And then if you want it flipped around. You. Okay, so now careful moving it a whole bunch because see how it swings around? Like the thing that's swinging around right now? I don't know how that impacts. So once you get it set up, okay. So the idea is, is we are putting these bags, are, we're gonna put some, I need the wheelbarrow too, don't I? Cut the camera. <laughs> I gotta go get the wheelbarrow. Let me know when, ouch, ow. Let me know when you're recording. Here we go, okay. Okay, so Randy's helping me. We'll do what? Six seconds, Six seconds now. So what we're going to be doing is using the wheelbarrow that's got a busted ass tire uh, to mix some stuff in. We have the paper shreds from our business. Uh, and then we have, hey, Sam dog, what you doing, buddy? Oh, super heavy bags of sand that we are going to be um mixing into some of the things but and then we're putting it into the cart to take it to the front of the house so we're gonna start with i don't know how many cubic feet this is supposed to be and i also huh well, it says 40 pounds, but I'm like, do they get it soak, sopping wet before they weigh it? Because it seems that way. Okay. So there's one bag. And it looks like... Let's do two bags of each. Because that will probably burn through that pretty quick. And it doesn't really have a... Yeah, it does. It's a little perforated. Thank you, baby. Okay, yeah. I think four bags will be our wheelbarrow's limit. Ooh, cow manure and compost. <laughs> no, it's just compost, but... Well, dag nabbit. Future Vaughn would have thought ahead and brought out a box knife and would have gotten a shovel 
<laughs> now, the only thing is, in my in the past experiences that I've had with the compo the cow manure, is it really increases the you're gonna get a bunch of June bugs laying their grubs in there, which is all right. My chickens like them, but it's just something to be mindful of. Now, I do believe that this is well composted. It's certainly, oh, well, it doesn't smell like fresh cow crap, but it doesn't smell like just dirt either. I'm gonna have to go get a shovel if you wanna cut the camera. No, is, are you just not recording now anyways? What happened? Oh, do what? Oh, okay. Is it not? Oh, my head's getting all hot. <laughs> I think I overdressed for the occasion, but it was, it's too windy for my big hat. I am all sunburnt. I love being outside, but being outside does not love me. All right, I'm gonna go get a shovel. I'm gonna mix that in for the uh, lavender. I don't think the strawberries need it. Do you know where our shovels are? Yes. It's a beautiful day though. Okay, let's get back to it. I'm coming, Randy. Okay. Now I gotta stir this literal crap up. That's some good looking dirt. I did. Oh, Z almost made it through, huh? Oh, that's... Oh man, I'm tired already. <laughs> this is not a good sign. <sighs> and my back hurts. Oh, gotta stretch. And a bend. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm ready to record again, Randy. <laughs> There's like rocks or something in there. as hard as a freaking anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you recording? <laughs> no! <laughs> Guys, if I can do this, you can do this. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> Ooh. But yeah, that stuff is hard as concrete. Just, I guess I didn't believe hard enough. <laughs> So bad at this that's fine I'll just keep going I should have just done two bags or one bag of each you know this is probably stirred pretty good <laughs> <laughs> hey Wendy <laughs> <Can you come? sighs> look at all that good dirt though you, you don't have to okay Okay, so what size is this one? I think this is the five gallon, and that's what I'm gonna be doing in the hanging baskets. See what I mean though? It's hard. Oh, don't waste it. We paid literal cash and money for that dirt. Let's see if we can't get some. Uh, all right. Ooh, that's good. Not another. In just a sec, I'm gonna break up these clods. Do you want us to move this to where you're not getting hit in the head of the tree branch? You good? Okay. But yeah, there's some really hard clumps in here. It's just compacted is all it is. So I'm just trying to break that up some. Okay, can I have the shovel? Thank you. Yeah, but I, I want to do a big scoop. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> the little shovels are for the sand. Um, Boop. Are they not? I Dude, I just work here. You want to make that so heavy you can't lift it? Yep. Oh, that's perfectly manageable. It's only five gallons of shit. <laughs> And dirt. Peat and hummus. 
cow manure. Ugh. Not like gabarnzo bean hummus. It's like leaf mold hummus, presumably. Okay. So that's looking pretty good and I can always top it off just a little bit more. So I'm gonna, ooh. Huh? Yeah, that tracks. I don't know why I stacked all the bags like this, putting little bags inside bigger bags, but this is the absolute worst method of trying to store things. Why must I always be the source of all of my problems? <laughs> want a big scoop. I do want a big scoop. <laughs> I feel as though you're making fun of me. Oh, okay. So I'm going to get all of these vines. These are the old tomatoes, actually. Pulled out of there. Ah, that's good enough. Here, before you get too... Yeah, that'll fit. Okay. Do you want me to do that part? Also, if you bring it up and tilt it, I can just, with my hands. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel silly having all this dirt like technically like yard and still buying dirt and doing containers but man working trying to build up something above that gravel line like and yeah i mean it's taken nine years of that back plot of having it be chicken and rabbit pasture for a little bit well and well to get it get the weeds down and then we still put all of that mulch and all that rabbit poop and it's just now gotten to where there's like maybe four inches of topsoil. So, I mean, I'm still going to be planting herbs and stuff over there. But anything that really needs a deep root system just doesn't do well. The tomatoes did okay. But I'm not very... Yeah. Huh. Tomatoes have a pretty deep root system. But I put them in horizontal too. So, okay. I do think that this could take more dirt. But we'll wait until tomorrow. Uh, I actually kind of like that smell. Okay. Could you lower the cage down over it and I can guide the little pokey bits? Should it be pokey side up? Because there's no soil to rest in. Yeah, it does seem like Poke Bear will just tear up the bag. Yeah, let's flip it over. Because I'm not tall enough for that to get me, anyhow. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right in the eye. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> we will need to. If this is what we're going to use these cages for from now on, uh -huh. we will need to come through and cut it. I'll just bend them. Okay. But well, okay. Or maybe we could grind them if some... this is what we're going to use them for for permanent. Okay. But yeah, so I was thinking that we could have one, two... Three, four, five, six, and not every pot has to have a cage on it. Oh, this one's great. Yeah. 
seven, and I could fit eight and possibly a ninth. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I do. But just on one side, I can fit at least eight cages. And then we could do planters here on this other side as well. Still probably on the inside edge. And I think Andy will be helping us clear this out whenever he comes to mow. Uh, we'll be able to empty out these rabbit tractors that I haven't been using. Uh, yeah, well, it's ever since uh, the chickens, there's nothing for the rabbits to eat in the backyard. Z, get your head out of there. Oh, he just sticks his head right back in. Okay. Well, what do you think of this, Randy? It could work. And, it, I mean, I don't think anybody would steal my tomato cages. See why they would. It's but, yeah, and if we're worried about it, or even just the wind disrupting. Well, um, I do see what you're talking about with the wind. Mm -hmm. But really, all we have to do is do the handles. Mm -hmm. Just zip tie the cage. That's good thinking. We'll do that. If it is, we've got bigger problems. <laughs> but yeah, alrighty. Well, that's that's all I can hope to get done today. I think. Bye. Hey guys. So this is the end of what we're up to today. Um, we got. It's mostly we've been working on. We did two premieres today on the main channel. And, um, I've recorded yoga already, uh, got, oh, I was going to plant some seeds that can wait till tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with how our hoop like structures have been holding up to all of this wind all day. I did add an additional brick. Um, we got a, oh, there's some stuff I need to trim over here. Let's do some pruning real quick. Well, so I still need to put my chickens to bed, but that'll be all right. We've got this, it's not quite, it's not poison ivy, but it irritates my skin just as much. Um, so now is the time to get it cleaned out. But yeah, Randy and I tagged inventory all day, which was good. It's something that needs done. And we did two premieres, which one of them was two hours and 40 minutes, and one of them was an hour and I think also 40 minutes. Um, so that's a thing. It's not nothing. Took a big, I, 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 I'm not going to call it a time sink because I enjoy it so much. Like it helps me to have energy and enthusiasm through the rest of the week, but it does take a big chunk of time so I really appreciate everybody who comes and hangs out doing our during our premieres um, because y'all make it a joy for us you know you, you guys keep something that would otherwise quite potentially feel like a chore and you make it joyful and that's you can't put a price on that so coming through yeah it's so so much easier to prune stuff back this time of year and I got the cheapest like eight dollar clippers because I'm so bad about all it takes is for getting them outside once and they rust up or we just we abuse our tools I wish I were better about it but here I am I don't think you don't belong here at all do you big boy no you don't let's see if we can do something that's done been snipped trying to do it through these fences too that was something that if I if I could go back and have a chat with past Vaughn about garden things that I wish I hadn't done the biggest one would be I don't need to line fences with a three foot deep bed because I have about a foot and a half arm span of comfortably being able to reach before I tip tea over kettle um and having the fence here I mean it is a great support structure to I can't get that with these little whoppers it's more than an inch thick but I can't uh resist planting stuff that's going to climb up the fence but also you know I need to be able to access it from both sides and right now I just can't not with my current reach and that's okay we'll figure it out 
but it makes it a bit difficult to harvest raspberries, which are what we have up this fence. And since the raspberries are all prickly, um, it makes it very uncomfortable to try to weed. Yeah, this is not something that I planted. No, it's a weed. Okay. It says I, you know, figure it out about halfway into pruning the dang thing down to the ground. And I just have to keep up on pruning. Oh, I got my hand stuck, I think. Well, well, it's stuck. Go ahead and trim it. There we go. I got it unstuck. That's good. Okay. Well, I think that's all I'm going to be doing for the evening, you guys. I will see y'all in the morning where... Uh, Hey y'all, Vaughn here with the Monster Vlog and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about, we're kind of just wrapping up this week's vlog, I think. Um, I don't know. It, there's been a whole lot, this has been a very busy week. Um, and I'm very optimistic about a whole bunch of stuff. I'm sorry, I'm just, my brain is fried. And so we aren't taking on any more projects for this week's vlog. And I am writing up a little bit of an outline for future vlogs um, to kind of give me a little bit of structure to my week. Because um, <laughs> it's proving difficult to balance, um, you know, all of our regular obligations with Back to Earth Creations, our main business that we run out of our home. And also, sorry, I'm watching a grackle. Let me see if I can turn this. So not at the house. But there, a little grackle just hopped down into our stump pond. Huh? Do you see the pop a little head up? Oh, I see you drinking bird. That makes me so happy. I need to fill up the um, the bird bath up high too. That way we can get in there. But um, yeah, just balancing our regular video and streaming schedule and kind of shipping everything and trying to do shop updates and kind of you know, uh, balance social media and doing all of our own accounting, what with it being tax season and everything, and just making sure that all of our ducks are in a row and quacking in, in time with each other, uh, and getting that to line up with the weather, um, so that I can get some garden work done that very much needs done, uh, within a timely manner, and it's like just lining up whenever the soil's dry enough versus, you know, what temperature it's going to be later or earlier or yeah basically later in the week um so that's presented some unique challenges but it's nothing we can't handle it's just something that uh to be aware of that well for me to be aware of as i juggle <laughs> so the bird that we're looking at up in the bird bath here i believe is a grackle i don't know if it's a male or a female i think it's a female but i don't know um i can't tell from back here uh, but yeah we've got grackles nesting all through our house we've got some different finch varieties we've got um, robins are out and about in the yard now which makes me very happy we have some cardinals that are nesting um, in the tree line near like just between us and the neighbors um, and yeah, it's, everything's really good. The sun's coming out, it's getting warmer. Um, I'll give you guys an update on the seedlings and just some other projects that we have on the porch. Um, so yeah, I'm just thinking, we started getting the grow bags filled and I did get the lemon balm cut up like cut into three. I just used like a watermelon knife. I was gonna get footage of it, but it's, if any of y'all have ever tried to vlog and get footage of stuff, it kind of, it's like having a kid help, if that makes sense. It slows everything down substantially. So um, I was like, I'm gonna be digging up and dividing some other plants, so I'll show you guys how I did that with those ones, but this one I had it dug up and it sat out for like two days waiting on me to get my button gear because I was like, I'd be out here, but I wouldn't know where my phone was. I'm losing my phone constantly. Or uh, I didn't have a tripod or just whatever little excuse, or it's like I, I've got five minutes of sunlight and I've gotta get this thing done, so. <sighs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I got it cut up and 
but I think it got frostbit because, or something, or maybe it was just wilting. I don't know. It looks dead. I don't, <laughs> but that was before I cut it up. We'll see. We'll see how it does. So I'll keep you guys posted about that. Um, we are prepping up hard for our uh, first vending event since 2019. And that's been really intense. We got the grow bag started. We've gotten, we've gotten more grow bags started in the front as well. And I'm putting together some hanging pots that I don't know whether or not they will support the weight of the uh, dirt and water and plants that I'm going to be putting into them. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. We started seed sprouting. I'll keep you guys posted on that. So there's basically, I just wanted to thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for our very first channel member. I'm still not entirely sure how to figure out who it is, um, but thank you anyways. I'm so excited. And we are putting together the practical prepper pantry video as well this coming week. So that's very, very exciting. Um, and oh yeah, I'm also building a fountain. <laughs> so that'll be fun too. But we'll make a video about that over on the main channel. And I'm trying to think. Yeah. It's been a busy week, but I didn't vlog most of it. And next week's going to be even busier. But I'm planning on vlogging it. Like we're doing like an outline and everything. So we'll see how that goes. But I just wanted to thank you guys so much for being you and being here. Um, I love hearing from you guys in the comments. I love chatting with y'all in the premiere. So hey, everybody in the premiere. And um, I think on that note, I'm going to close out this week on the homestead. Poppy laid two eggs one day. Like, because I harvest... Every night when I put the chickens to bed, I harvest, let's get this turned around. There we go. <laughs> Whoop, it's still super zoomed in, isn't it? So they're my chickens. I gave them some greens, but little Miss Poppy there, the gray one front and center, uh, laid two eggs one day and she's six years old. So I am just intensely, I'm so impressed by the work ethic of our chickens because they just stay busy all the time. We are keeping them contained to the enclosure uh, just to give the rest of the garden a little bit of a chance to um, like grow a little bit because they just dig everything up, which is fine. Like it's, I don't mind it most of the year, but I would like our perennials to get a chance, you know, because they kind of decimated some of my daffodils. No, that's okay, but now I know for next year and oh that's oh do you see that cardinal oh he's right behind the post of course he is <laughs> he's so red though but yeah they come in and graze with the chickens let's see if I can follow him up oh what a pretty bird yeah you are look at you sir oh so handsome <laughs> I just like bird watching with you guys as well. Bye-bye. Okay, so on that note, I am going to let you guys go. And I will see y'all either in um, our next yoga vlog or our next weekly vlog that premiere every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. And also over on the main channel too, if you guys are into crafting. Um... I'll see y'all over there. So until then, guys, keep on keeping on. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>